Today is going to be a challenge for me. Uh, up until now, we've all been struggling to put the model together. What I'm finding is that some of you have already had the aha. It's all clicked into place, and, and now you're just wondering why I keep talking. On the other hand, some of you are still struggling. Some of you haven't had that aha yet. And so I'm going to teach to those individuals who are still struggling. I apologize to you, those of you who are just bored silly. Uh, believe me, you're in a much better place. Uh, last day, we built the voltage model, and we found that it was, compared to the current model, just really, really simple. It didn't have very much to it. Voltage was just the electric, uh, the electric potential energy that was given to one coulomb as it went through a battery. And that essentially takes that coulomb to the top of the electrical cliff. And then it falls down the cliff as it goes around the circuit. And as it falls down, it loses electric potential energy until it gets to the negative terminal of the battery and starts all over again. Um, we found a new uh, way of visually seeing what the values were in a circuit. Before, when we had two identical bulbs and one was brighter than the other, we could say there was more flow through the brighter bulb. There was more current going through it. Well, now we've seen that if there's a brighter bulb, it's got more volts across it. And when I say volts, I mean the voltage difference across it. It's like an electrical pressure difference. Now, those two ideas are not unrelated. If there's more voltage across the bulb, more pressure difference across the bulb pushing current, well, the result is I get more current going through the bulb. So once I see that a bulb is brighter, I not only know that it has more flow, I also know that it's got more volts. Now we say more volt, more jolt. If you can come up with something catchier than that, I am all ears. That doesn't do it for me. Okay, but that's the best we got. Now here's the piece that allows us to solve problems with the voltage model. What goes up must come down. Just like you can't go uh, throughout a day and go uphill more than downhill if you come back to the same place. The same thing is true with electric potential energy. Whatever, whatever rise in voltage you have going through the battery, you have to have the same drop in voltage as you go around any single path back to the negative terminal of the battery. Okay? So the rise across the battery has to equal the drops across all the bulbs or resistors along any single path. Now, the way we use that, uh, we use it two ways. Um, sometimes, oh, actually, let me first of all just point out that this is the reason for the independence. If this branch of A, B, and C has direct connections with nothing but wire to both sides of the battery, it's got 12 volts across that branch no matter what I do over here. There's one exception, only one. If I short out this branch, I'm also shorting out that branch, and I'm also shorting out the battery. In other words, if I take a connecting wire and connect it from there to there, well, that's the same as taking that connecting wire and putting it right across the battery. In that case, there's just not a battery in existence that can, that can supply an infinite amount of current. And if you're hooking up a, a path with zero resistance, that's what you're asking for is infinite current. And so what happens is you shut the battery down. The battery is broken. And so you, uh, all the bulbs would go out. That's an exception, and I would never do that. Uh, I probably would never do that on an exam. <laughs> I might, I might not do that on an exam. 
there are chances. Okay, how do I use the voltage model? Well, sometimes I'm using it to compare two bulbs that give me a pizza problem with the current model. Uh, if you think about D and E, the current after it goes through A splits with more than half going this way and less than half going that way. So D gets all of the small pizza, E gets half of the big pizza. If I want to use my voltage model, I pick two paths, one from one side of the battery to the other that goes through D, and another that goes through E. <coughs> and then I just add up all the voltage drops along those two paths. Along the blue path, I would have A plus B plus D. Along the purple path, I would have A plus C plus E. Since both of those paths have to have a voltage drop equal to the battery, that's going to be, they're going to be equal. They'll both be 12 volts. Now you see that I've got A on both sides, I can cancel that. What that means is I didn't really have to go from one side of the battery to the other. I can go from any point to any other point, and the voltage difference between those points has to be independent of path. Whether I go this path or whether I go that path, the voltage has to be the same. It doesn't matter what's on those two paths. It's just like elevation chain. You come down from the M to the parking lot, you can either go with the switchbacks or you can go straight down the, the vertical trail. Either way, you got the same change in elevation to get to that parking lot. Okay? Now, if I want to compare D and E, the first thing I do is compare the other two. If I compare B versus C, I can use the current model to do that. I got more than half of the current through the battery going through C, so it's brighter. When I compare the other two, if this is going to be an equality, the inequality has to go the other way. If the inequality goes uh, that way, it's got to go this way. Check that your neighbor understands that, please. <laughs> now, <laughs> The other way you can use the voltage model is not to compare two bulbs, but to compare one bulb to itself before a change and after a change. In other words, if I ask what happens to bulb C when I short out bulb B, I'm really only interested in what's happening to a single bulb, bulb C. So I only look at one path that goes through C And I could have put F there, right? It's any path from one side of the battery to the other. And I set that equal to the 12 volts of the battery. And if I want to know what happens to C, I look at what happens to A. By adding a path, I've lowered the resistance of the circuit. That increases the current through the battery. A is an indicator bulb for the battery. So A gets brighter. If A gets brighter, the volts across it get bigger. Now that means if this is still going to be equal to 12, that these guys have to get dimmer. Now, I know that F is always going to do the same thing that C does. F always gets half the current that goes through C. So if C gets brighter, F gets brighter. If C gets dimmer, F gets dimmer. So these two both get dimmer so that this can still equal 12 volts. It's a zero-sum game. If I leave this lecture today with more money in my pocket, you leave with less. Okay? It's a principle of all business. Questions on that? Let's look at problem 12 that you voted off the island.
the first thing you want to do when you're faced with a messy circuit like this is to decide what's independent of what. So you've got this battery, you've got A and you've got B. And if I consider A and B as a branch, it's got direct connections to both sides of the battery. That's going to be an independent branch. I'll call that one. Now, if I look at the rest of the circuit, it looks all messy. Now, here's the thing. When you're in an argument with someone, you never want to let them frame the debate. Similarly, you don't want me to draw your circuit for you. I'm going to draw it in such a way that's going to be as messy as possible, as confusing as possible. You want to draw the circuit to make it clear what is in parallel and series and, and what is independent. Okay? So if I give you this, don't stick with it. Redraw it. That's the most important skill that you'll bring with you uh, after being able to tell which is more resistance. Now, this was C, D, E, F, and G. When I redraw something, I redraw it in such a way that the two branches are the same. So I would redraw this That's pretty simple. Boy, don't you wish that were the circuit that Greg gave you on the exam? Yeah. I mean, the, the current would split 50-50 there. All these bulbs would be the same brightness. We'd go on to problem two. Now, folks, let me just pause here and point out that that problem, uh, that problem 12 was problem one on an exam. When you look at the two sample exams, they all have a problem one that looks like that problem 12. There's a messy circuit, you're asked to compare bulbs two at a time, then you make a change to the circuit, and you're asked what happens to some of the bulbs. That's always the first page. You can count on it being the first page of your exam. It'll just be a different circuit, okay? Now, once you've drawn the two branches identical to each other, you ask yourself, what's missing? Well, the only thing missing is C, D, and E. And I add them on a separate new path, like that. Now, it doesn't matter what I add. What's important is that I added it in parallel as a new opportunity for flow. Now, the first bulbs that you're asked to compare in that problem are A and G. A is an indicator for branch 1. All the current through branch 1 goes through A. G is an indicator for branch 2. All of the current through branch 2 goes through G. So what I'm really asking is, how does the current split here and then come back together there? Which is the easy path and which is the hard path. Now, many of you are going to just say, oh, that's the easy path, that's the hard path. But on an exam, you have to justify that answer. This is what I would expect for a full point answer. I would say, branch two is the same as branch one, except for the extra path with C, D, and E. Therefore, the resistance of 2 
is less than the resistance of 1 by V equals IR, the current through 2 is going to be greater than the current through 1. And the last step would be A and G are indicators for their branches. Now, if you left off that last step, we'd probably give you full credit, just assuming that that was obvious to you. But uh, that would be a perfect answer right there. Now, the next one that you were asked to compare are A and B. And they're equal, and all you have to say there is series. So you see, you've got to say more words for that other set. <clears throat> okay, I forgot where we're going from there. C and F. E, I'm sorry? C and F. C and F? Okay. If I'm comparing C and F, I'm essentially asking how does the current split there and come back together there? Well, I've got a hard path and an easy path, and this is the hard path, this is the easy path. To tell which is the hard path, I circle the new stuff. D and E. If it weren't for D and E, the current would split 50-50 here and come back together there. And then I ask, how did I add D and E? Now, D and E are a parallel network, but that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, how did I add it? And I added it in series. I had to use scissors to put that in. If I look at Fred on his journey, Fred can go through one bulb and be back to the mainland. Here, Fred goes through one bulb, not back yet, got to go through something else. It might be an easy something else, but it's still something else. So I would say that F is brighter than C, and my reasoning is current favors path of least resistance. My students were using that path of least resistance for I think a year and a half before I figured out what it meant. I thought I had to do a Santa Claus, but uh, path of least resistance, okay? Hold on. Now the next two are G and F. G and F? This is an all versus part argument. You could say G is the indicator for branch two, it gets all of the current through branch two, F only gets part. Um, the other way to do it mathematically is to say the current through G is equal to the current through F plus the current through C. Okay? Those two paths all go through G. Now the last one, B versus F. Is that right? Yes. Okay. That one is a pizza problem. B gets all of the small pizza, F gets more than half of the large pizza. So that means that I have to uh, pick a path that goes through B and pick a path that goes through F and I set those equal to each other. If I want to compare B and F, I first of all have to compare the other two. I've already compared the other two. That was the first thing I did up there. And I said, oops, I didn't say, that G is brighter than A. Well, if G is brighter than A, then it's got more volts across it than A. So now when I compare the other two, the inequality has to go the other way. And so B is brighter than F. So I have a question for you. As it's drawn there, is the path through F and G not independent to the rest of the circuit? Because there's a path directly to the battery that doesn't have to go through anything else. It can only go, it has, it could go through just F and G, so that has to equal V battery. Is that correct or incorrect? You're saying, would that be independent? Well, meaning that 
if I measured from the top F to the bottom of G, would that not have to equal V battery? That is, yeah. So F and G have to be uh, 12 volts. Okay, same with A and B then. Same as A and B. Okay, so we have to mix and match the models to determine something. Is that essentially what you're saying? Because if you use the voltage model by what we just said there, then A, B, F, and G would be equal. Oh, heck no. No, because of no, the current I, All I know is that this has to add up to, uh, these guys have to add up to 12 volts. Okay. And they're in series. So there's 6 volts and 6 volts. These guys add up to 12 volts, but they are not in series. Everything that goes through G doesn't have to go through F. Oh, okay. What is in series is G and this network. Okay. All of that. So, yeah, essentially what we're doing is for different comparisons, we can use the current model for some, we can use the voltage model for others. And typically people start with the current model because they spend more time with it. When they get stuck with a pizza problem, they go over to the voltage. But if voltage is more comfortable for you, you can just start with the voltage model and switch when you get stuck. So are we saying that G would have greater than 6 volts? Yes. Okay. Six has, uh, G has greater than 6 volts, and F would have less than 6 volts. Okay? Now, in the last part of this problem, we take out volt C and leave the empty socket behind. That's just a gaping hole. Now, after I take out volt C, F and G are in series. Because now everything that goes through G has to go through F. There's no longer a path going through the other way. And now, F is going to change from less than 6 volts to 6 volts. It's going to get brighter. G is going to change from greater than 6 volts to 6 volts. It's going to get dimmer. And B is going to stay 6 volts. It will stay the same. Okay? Check that your neighbor's on the bus with this. We also have a solution at the D2L site that you can look at. We got places to go, people to see. Just in case you're right. We decided that one way of looking at the voltage model was to think of the voltage as the of the battery. How much it has to push to get these charges to go through the obstacles. Now when we use that, that way of thinking about the voltage model, we have to put things into boxes that are in series. In, in this case, box A is in series with box B. Everything that goes through box A has to go through box B. That means that the battery has to push the same number of coulombs through each of those boxes every second. Now, that means that we divide up the of the battery where it's needed. If those two boxes are the same resistance, they're equally hard to get through, I would divide up the battery voltage equally. If one of the boxes is harder to get through, has a higher resistance, then I would give the higher voltage to the greater or the lesser R? Greater. The greater R. Okay? Because that's going to be the harder box to get through. And that's where I'm going to need the bigger oom to get the coulombs through. Now, Hallmark, on the last two pages, has this problem. I want to give you a chance to enjoy your uh, three-day weekend, so I'm going to help you solve these problems. Um, the first thing you're asked to do is rank these bulbs using the current model. And when we use the current model, we be the river. And it doesn't matter whether you go around clockwise or counterclockwise. Every time you get a branching point, ask do I split 50-50 or some other way. <clears throat> Rank the bulbs with your neighbor.
here 50-50, the two paths look identical, each of these get half the current through the battery. The river comes back together and splits again, this time not 50-50, I got more than half going the easy way, less than half going the hard way. So my current model would give me 6 is the brightest, then 3, and then 4 equals 5, and then 1 equals 2. Now. As I just said, on the exam, you can choose whichever model you want to start with. In your homework, we tied one hand behind your back, and we said, use the voltage model. You have to use the voltage You must use the voltage model. And you've got to use that voltage model to share the 12 volts of the battery. Now, to do that, we have to ask what's in series. What's in series with 6? Well, it's not 4, it's not 5, it's the network of 4 and 5. Likewise, it's in series with the network of 1, 2, and 3. Now at this point, I have to worry about which of those boxes is harder to get through. Which box has the greatest resistance? Well. This box is the same as that box, except for an extra path. This box is the same as that box, except for an extra path. And this box is the same as that box, except for an extra clutter on an existing path. So what I've got here is a papa bear, mama bear, baby bear situation. Okay? Now, let's use the voltage model. I got the most volts across that bottom box, so 6 is going to be brightest. I have the second most volts across the top box. All of those volts are across 3, so 3 is going to be the second brightest. I know that I've got more volts across 3 than I do across 4 or 5. And I know that the voltage across 1 plus the voltage across 2 is equal to the voltage across 3. So 3 is going to be uh, brighter than 1 equals 2. But when I try to compare bulb 1 to bulb 4, I run into a pizza problem. If I think of the voltage across that top box as a medium pizza, a mama-sized pizza, one gets half of those volts. If I think of the voltage across this box as a baby size pizza, a small pizza, four gets all of the volts across that box. Okay? So I got half of a medium pizza versus all of a small pizza. I can't do it. That's why I would switch over to the current model. Some of the problems are only doable with current. Some of them are only doable with voltage. If you have both models, you should be able to do any circuit. That turns out not to be quite true. In the 23 years that I've been teaching this, I've only run across one circuit that I couldn't do with either model. I got a pizza problem both ways. Unfortunately, I didn't discover that it was a pizza problem both ways until I had Xerox 250 exams. And I sat down to write the key. And I thought, oh, I can't do that. 
So I had to throw away 250 exams and start over. Um, that, that question will not be, will not be on your exam. Okay. Now, we take out bulb one and we, we leave the empty socket behind. What happens to bulb two? It's out. But if you say it's shorted out, you will get zero points. If I short out a bowl, if I were to short out a bowl, I would take a wire and put it from one side of the bowl to the other. And that would make it go dark. But by shorting out bulb two, the current through the battery goes up. If I remove bulb one and leave the empty socket, I've broken a path and the current through the battery goes down. So they're very different. They're very different. How do you want that phrase? Yeah, two is on an incomplete path. Okay. So it's out. Now, what happens to the resistance of the boxes? Well, this one stays the same, this one stays the same. I only made the change up there. And so that one now becomes the same resistance as the bottom box. Now here's where there's an opportunity for confusion. If I worry about what happens to the resistance of the bottom box, I will get the wrong answer. What I need to worry about is what happens to that bottom box's share of the total resistance. I mean, its resistance didn't change, but by increasing the resistance of that box, I change the share of the total resistance that that bottom box represents. And it's the share that matters. Let me illustrate that with an example. If I were dividing up the 12 volts between a 2 ohm resistor and a 4 ohm resistor in series, it would be easy. The, the 4 ohm would get twice as much voltage, and it has to add up to 12. Now, if I, if I memorize the greater the resistance, the greater the voltage, I'm going to get myself into trouble. Because if I try to figure out, using that saying, how many volts are across this 200 ohms, well, it's 100 times bigger resistance than that. It should get 100 times the volts. That's 400 volts. That's pretty impressive from a 12 volt battery, wouldn't it be? If you want to know how many volts are across this 200 ohms, what information do you need? What's that? What is this sharing the volts with? With that. i got to know what this is. If that's another 200, then it's going to split it 50-50, 6 and 6. Okay? So, you don't want to say the greater the resistance, the greater the voltage. You want to say the greater the share of the resistance on that series path, the greater the share of the voltage along that series path. Okay? Now if I go back to the problem we care about, because this got a bigger share of the re total resistance, this bottom box had to get a smaller share. And that means that the voltage across that bottom box, its share of the 12 volts has to go down, and that means six is gonna get dimmer. <clears throat> By the voltage model. By the voltage model. Does that make sense? Its share of the total resistance got smaller, its share of the 12 volts got smaller, if it's got less volts, it gets dimmer. Now let's look at the current model. In the current model, I've removed a path, the current through the battery goes down, six is an indicator, getting all the current through the battery, six gets dimmer. Either, either model, current model, voltage model, it gets dimmer. Check the two neighbors on the bus. This is tutorial homework due Tuesday. Due Tuesday.
Are there any questions before I go on? Do we have tutorial next week? There is tutorial next week. Yes, there is. Um, the material covered in tutorial, RC circuits, it, it's a wonderful tutorial to help you see the voltage model. It'll be a good experience before the exam. There will be, as I said on that handout, there will be no questions on RC circuits, no capacitors on the exam. Okay? But I, it's still going to be a good experience for you to have that tutorial before the exam. And we'll just wait until the final to have any RC circuit. Okay. Oh, we got one last piece. What happens to the first box's share of the total resistance? It goes up. And so what happens to the voltage across three? It gets brighter. Okay? Now, the other way I could say that, using the notation we've been using thus far, is I could pick a path that goes through three and six. Back to the battery. That's got to add up to the 12 volts of the battery. If six gets dimmer, because I've removed a path, the current through the battery goes down, well then three has to get brighter. Now, uh, whoop. What happens to four? Four is always going to get half the current through six. Is that right? So if six gets dimmer, what happens to four? It's going to go down. So that means three has to, it still got out up to 12. And if uh, four and six go down, three's got to go up to compensate. Okay, a summary slide. We have two basic types of circuits. We got when things are in parallel, when we've got things in series. When things are in parallel, the current splits. If they're equal, it splits 50-50, the two paths. If, if they're not equal, it splits some other way. Okay? But the voltage across parallel paths will always, always be the same, regardless of what's on those paths. No matter which path you come down from the M to the parking lot, you come down the same number of meters. In series, it's the current that's the same, because there's no other path. It goes through one and goes through the other. It's the voltage that we divide, we take the 12 volts and we share it amongst, share like a pie, amongst the elements in series. If they're the same resistance, they split it 50-50. If one's harder to get through, it gets a bigger share of the volts. Now, last day we solved this problem and we said we were solving it with the voltage model. But in truth, in truth, we were using a, a hybrid model. What I said was, these guys have to split the 12 volts evenly, 6 and 6. And then I said, oh, if this bulb is brighter than A, it's got to have more volts. I just used the current model there. If I want to use a full-blown, pure voltage model, I would put things in boxes that are in series. A and B are in series with each other. C, however, is in series with that network. Along each of the branches, I divide up the 12 volts. If the two boxes look the same, I divide it 50-50. If I look down this other branch, I've got a hard box and an easy box. This is the same as that, but with an extra path the hard box is going to get a bigger share, so that's going to be bigger than half, less than half. Why? Now I can compare B and D using just a voltage model. Are we going to be allowed to use either current or voltage? Are you going to have questions? That no, nope, I will never tie, a, tie your hand behind your back. You'll be able to use both models. Okay, I have a pretest for you. Normally we have those at the beginning of class. Uh, this is just... Uh, Kind of a change up there. 
I'm handing you two pages front and back. We're only going to do the front of the first page. And it's very, very easy. It's not going to take you very long. Okay, folks, in working that problem 12 and uh, taking time on that to uh, kind of get a handle on it, we've run ourselves out of time. I would ask you to finish this pretest and bring it with you on Monday. We'll talk about it then. Have a great holiday. Happy, happy Easter.